Picture this, you're in the forest taking a selfie with a bear when your phone dies. No one's gonna believe you without proof. Only if you had a way of charging your dead device. Should have gotten a set of portable solar panels. Here's my top three. Number three goes to... This guy, the big blue 28 watt solar charge. This is actually one of the better priced panels at $70. Maximum wattage is 28 watts, which gets split between three USB-A ports, and the maximum power from those ports is 12 watts. Wait, the math ain't mathing. Three times 12 is 36, this is 28. Hmm, so you're obviously not gonna get 36 watts from this 28 watt uh, panel. That's pretty much promising somebody a three course meal and kicker than KD for each uh, course. Now one of the standout features for this product is the low light charging. In shadow during a bright day, the charger provided about 2.4 watts of charging. 2.4 watts is like charging your device with half a old school iPhone charger. And if you're wondering, the average for a low light charging is 1.63 watts. So this thing definitely beats everybody else. This product did well during overcast days, hitting around eight watts. And the solar panel hit its maximum single port wattage of 12 watts around 55 kilolux, which is early morning sun for where I'm at. This charger has four panels and it'll still work even if you cover up three of them. And one of the downsides with this product is that it's rated to IPX4, which is the bare minimum in terms of any type of protection. A handle splashes of water, and nothing else. So you might break this panel if you decide to use it as a uh, temporary umbrella. Don't do this. These panels are wrapped up in a canvas-like material, which means it folds out really easily, lays flat, and is just ready to go. Some of the panels kind of have to like warm up. It's really annoying. Big Blue does include a USB-A to C cable with their product, as well as four carabiners. So you can hand this thing off your backpack through these uh, large metal grommets. Overall, I'm a big fan of this product. Uh, I just wish it was a little tougher in terms of uh, environmental protection. For this video, I tested eight different panels using 14 different criteria, including price, protection, charge speeds, and low light, overcast conditions, sunny conditions, as well as handling. Now for the charge speeds, I spent hours outside recording the performance of the panels across a variety of sunlight conditions. It took me a really long time to do this video. Now I live in Calgary, uh, which is one of the sunnier places in Canada, but even at 2 p.m. my light meter doesn't go over 75k uh, lux. I believe folks that live closer to the equator uh, will see lux values of 100k or more, which means that these panels will do a little bit better. This was number three. This is number two. It's the X-Dragon XD SP001. This is one of the most expensive panels in my test group at $120, but it offers a maximum of 70 watts, which kinda is borderline a lie. This thing only has two USB-A ports with a maximum wattage of 12 watts each. So 70 minus 24 is... Where's the rest of the wattage coming from? This DC output. It gives you 54 watts of power. So if you don't need the DC output, about 66% of the energy generated from this set of solar panels is kinda wasted. Now the DC output's gonna be handy for charging larger items like I don't know a car battery but one of the coolest things about X Dragon is that you can daisy chain multiple sets of panels it's just like bringing a friend for a little bit of extra fun when it came to charging devices in the Sun this product was a little slower than the big blue 28 watt panels providing my devices with 1.9 watts of power which is borderline unusable but in overcast as well as midday Sun this thing does very well mostly because it's got nine panels. There's so many panels that my overhead camera can't fit them all in. When it comes to overcast conditions with all these panels, you hit the 12 watt maximum uh, wattage on the ports uh, really quickly. And with the larger collection of panels, this product easily provides 12 watts of uh, power to both USB-A ports easily. Basically, this thing is ready to go all the time. It's very, very handy for me. But this set of panels has a protection rating of IPX4, which again is the bare minimum. Like Big Blue, they use some sort of canvas fabric to wrap everything. If you need a tough set of panels, I'll cover that in the next minute. My biggest gripe with this product is that if you cover a third of the panels, the entire uh, set dies, which is kind of annoying. Now, even though this is the largest set of panels in my collection, it's still tucks up really nicely, very compact. It weighs quite a bit at 1500 grams. It's twice the average weight. With this product, x drive included USB-A cables that you can fit in this tiny pouch, DC uh, output heads, and, uh, and nipple clamps for like your car batteries. There are also some carabiners that you can hook up to uh, these little rope things. Not as strong as metal grommets, but they get the job done. So overall, this X-Dragon product is actually really good. Offers you better than average charging, a uh, bit more functionality with the DC outputs, and it's decently priced for how much wattage it provides. All right, let's talk about the tough panels, which are these guys and this. This is the Jackery Solar Saga 40 watt mini solar panel. This thing's rated to IP68, which is kind of like a waterproof case. Now this product isn't number one, it's uh, number four. It came really close to being in the top three with one downside, um, the price. This thing is bloody expensive. But this product is actually quite decent. Great speeds when it comes to charging direct sunlight. Not so much during overcast situations. And it comes with a really long cable for you to plug stuff in. But this thing was $150. 
Um, if it was $20 cheaper, it would have been number three in my video. But if you need something really tough, this Jackery uh, Solar Sega is the one to get. Now, if $150 is too much, you can try again, uh, going with this Flex Solar, as well as Goal Zero. I wouldn't touch these guys with a uh, wet broomstick because this is really expensive. This was 140 bucks and it charges terribly. This thing's under 50. It's super light, but it's only two panels. Uh, so you don't get a whole lot of uh, power from them. But if all you need is just a little top off here and there, this Flex Solar S20 solar pad will get the job done. If you're thinking about getting one of these products, make sure you use my links. I'm a reviewer, not an influencer. I do not care which product you get as long as you use my links and as long as you found this video useful. Number one panel is, no, not that one. It's this one, the Renault GE Flex 30 watt port portable solar panel. <laughs> this $75 portable set of solar panels is the clear winner in my test group. It hits the right spot of price performance as well as usability. Now for these eight different products between number two and number seven, the score difference was between 3.4 and 3.6. It's such a tiny margin. But with this Renault G product, the score was 2.4. So it blows everybody out of the water. But there is one thing for this set of panels that makes me go, oh, maximum wattage for this product is 30 watts, which is split between the USB-C and USB-A port. 30 watts doesn't seem like much, but Renogy does offer a 20 watt USB-C port. It is the only set of solar panels that offers the 20 watt port. USB-A port tops out at 18 watts, which is also quite high. Downside with this product is that if you've got two things plugged into this panel, you're not getting max charge speeds for any of them. When it comes to charging in the shadows, this product tied with my number three product, producing 2.4 watts of power. In overcast situations, the Renogy G only hits nine watts, which is below the number two product, but miles ahead of the three watt average. In midday sun, this solar panel got close to 20 watts. I saw 19 watts, um, but given my location, I don't think it could have gone any higher. Like I honestly can't state how important it is to have a 20 watt output um, on your set of solar panels. Because at 20 watts with an iPhone, you're getting 50% in 30 minutes. If you go with something that only has a 12 watt uh, output, that's 45 minutes. And if you go with 10 watts, which is what this Goal Zero uh, provides, you're gonna get 50% in about 60 minutes. Now, given that the wattage of these panels will fluctuate because of weather, having that extra 20 watts is just a must have. But here's the thing that makes me go, if you cover two out of the four panels, the entire thing shuts down. To be clear, I'm not talking about shade or overcast. I'm talking about it being completely blacked out. And you might be thinking, why might that be important? Well, if this happens, your solar panel's done. These panels are rated to uh, IP54, which is a step up above the bare minimum. It'll keep dust out from its uh, internal workings, but anything above a water splash is still gonna be an issue. The overall size of the entire package isn't too bad, though the uh, pouch on the front is pretty bulky, but large, so you could put a lot of stuff into it. Overall, it's the performance of the panels that propels this to the top of my list. It's just very, very fast. Questions, comments, leave them down there. If you're planning on getting one of these solar panels, make sure you use my links. I'm a reviewer, not an influencer. I don't care which product you get as long as you use my links and if I was helpful to you.